When dealing with pain, you might hear someone say it's all in your head, and in a way, it is. Well, there's a treatment to help chronic pain patients by disrupting pain signals that go from the body to the brain. CBS News by Mianca Lauren Pastrana has the story of a patient who found relief through spinal cord stimulation. If you're doing well, that's okay. Right. That's what I was, I was like. I think I'm doing fine. But that was not the case just two years ago for Alexa Alexander. In 2023, I had a horrible back issue. I could barely walk. It was excruciating to the point where even when I would breathe, it would hurt. She tried pain management, physical therapy, and injections, even a discectomy surgery, but still her back was in a lot of pain. So her doctors at Baptist Health recommended spinal cord stimulation. I like to describe it to patients as a pacemaker for the spine. It's a device that sits underneath your skin and sends electrical signals to the spinal cord in a very precise manner to block the pain signals from going from the lower back or legs all the way up to the brain. Dr. Akshay Goyal, along with Dr. Jason Leonakis, helped Alexa find the relief she'd been searching for. So essentially what it does is it'll cover up the pain signal with a numbness or tingling feeling. And for most people, that's a lot more you know, palatable than just a feeling of, you know, excruciating, sharp, burning pain. And Alexa can control the intensity from her phone. So you're on 13, but you can go all the way to 132. Have you ever turned it up just to see how that feels? Never. Okay. <laughs> Never. What's the highest you've turned it up? I think I've probably gone up to 25, and it starts getting uncomfortable. Really? Yeah. Uncomfortable how? Like, it's, it's a very aggressive tingling. Patients first have to do a trial to see if the treatment is right for them, and their devices are tailored to them so they can't raise the setting to a dangerous level. Spinal cord stimulation can also be used on people with diabetic neuropathy, peripheral vascular disease, injuries to the spinal cord, and post-surgical pain. A more new indication is patients who have never had any surgery um, but have bad back pain or sciatica. So that's emerging but still kind of in the in the pipeline of being uh, defined and verified. The technology, even though it's come a very long way in the last 50 years, there's still a big untapped uh, sort of potential for it. Alexa is reaping the benefits of spinal cord stimulation now with just this small scar to show for it. How much has this improved your life? I would say I'm at I'm at a 90% difference from when we started in January of 2023. That was it's huge. The battery needs to be recharged and Alexa says she does that every couple of months with a device similar to a wireless cell phone charger that she straps to her lower back for about an hour and a half. The device itself will last several years depending on the intensity of the stimulation. Lauren Pastrana, CBS News, Miami.